accelerating out of there now down through to Balakrai for fifth gear on the approach to Balakrai. I'm just going to get held up a little bit here. There's a very nasty jump after this very fast left-hand turn here and I don't want to get into any problems with these guys in front. There we are. You heard the re engine revs go up as the bike actually took off and um, I've got a good drive out of there so now I can accelerate flat out down through to sixth gear to quarry bends. Again, I'm going to be a little bit held up here. This is the new quarry bends. The trees have been removed and it's made it very, very fast. I'm not doing it as fast as I obviously would during a race or during a part of the track where no one was in my way. The exit speed from here is very important because we're now onto the Solby Strait, which is again another flat out part of the course. Just managed to get that guy past me there and onto the Solby Strait itself. The bike does up to 180 miles an hour down here, depending sometimes there's a headwind, sometimes there's a serious crosswind on this part of the course. And as the gateways appear down here, you can get a serious crosswind that can affect the stability of the machine. On the approach now to Solby Bridge at the end of the Solby Strait, difficult place to judge braking yet again. Just go up the inside of that guy there and take this in first gear, very slow, 50 miles an hour, and then accelerate out of there up to Ginger Hall. Good spectator spot this, a very bumpy left hand bend, the railings on the left hand side there, let the bike run out up to third and fourth gear now and accelerate down to Kerrimore. You can't approach this as fast as you would like to, you can hear the, the bike clattering there, the front suspension is working overtime and uh, the bumps really do put you off through here. Another jump coming up here, there we are, got that over with and now we can have a run, nice run down to Glen Tramon. Again, another very very fast part of the course but an enjoyable part of the course if you know where you're going you just let the road do the work the white line crosses between either side of the front wheel as you can see it doing there and you just keep back in a straight line really this is a double left there's a second part and then straight on the brakes and down a couple of gears into Glen Tramon itself which is a long right then back another gear to second gear 60 miles an hour and accelerate out of there this is a, a nice approach now to Milntown Cottage. Again, a good place to let the bike flow, let the road do the work. The road crosses either side of the front wheel. As you can see it doing there, I'm keeping the bike straight and the road's doing the work. Up to Milntown Cottage, fifth gear. Um, important here to not to go into that as fast as you really would want to, but to line that part at the left there and then the right here itself. The kerb does jut out on the left-hand side coming out of there. There you see it. Uh, not a place to... Uh, have too many heroics there. The front wheel just wiggles there, bike gets in out of shape a little bit before we flick right and now down to Schoolhouse Corner. There used to be a very nasty bump here braking before Schoolhouse Corner. It's been removed and it allows you to brake and enter this corner perhaps better than you would normally be able to and thus making the speed down to Parliament Square a lot quicker. Parliament Square, another famous point on the course, good spectator spot. You can see the forks compressed there as I'm heavy on the brakes very slow corner there, first gear, and then accelerating out of the Parliament Square, echoing out of the houses up May Hill. <laughs>